investors poured money into high yield bonds in 2009, the steep rally in high yield even had some investors predicting a dot com like bust that might follow. Well, will the markets take a breather in 2010? Marty Fritzen is the CEO and founder of Fritzen Investment Advisors, an expert in the world of high yield. Marty, good to have you with us. Thanks very much for coming in. Yeah, great to be here. So the rally in high yield, it just continues. Yeah, we're already up 2% this month, uh, which is a well above average month, but we're only uh, you know, 11 days into it. What are people doing? Just chasing yield? Well, uh, chasing yield is probably is somewhat a disparaging way of putting it, but the fact is that lo uh, short-term interest rates are very low. Uh, investors who want any kind of yield really have to go out further and probably down in quality. And uh, the good news is that there was so much refinancing done last year, the companies by and large have pushed out their debt maturities to at least 2012 or beyond. So those companies that are able to cover their interest now will probably continue to cover their interests. They won't have debt maturities to repay, and that's even with a sluggish economic recovery. So uh, it's not hard to understand the appeal right now. So this doesn't end badly, or are we going to be entering some very tricky times? Well, I think that right now you could make an argument that the spreads are a little tighter than uh, is consistent with the really current default rate. I mean, the, the number that you hear about is 13% uh, you know, for the U.S. for calendar 2009. The fact is, in the uh, fourth quarter, it was running at an annualized rate by our calculation of about 5.4. Uh, Moody's has just uh, come out with the forecast that that number will fall to 3.6 for 2010. So uh, we're uh, at, at a level wider than we ought to be by the end of 2010. You know, we may have some backup in between, but people have been saying that for the last six months or more, and it just hasn't happened. So what about new issues hitting the market? Are we going to see a lot more? Yeah, it's uh, starting out with a boom already, uh, and uh, the street, street's expecting probably 15 or 20 billion, which is a pretty good month in January. Uh, still a lot of refinancing going on. Uh, companies are pushing the uh, maturities out even further, and uh, there's an expectation we'll probably see some pickup in the M&A and uh, leverage buyout component of that issuance during 2010. So where do people, uh, where, sh where should people be cautious here? Because it sounds as if this is all turning out to be too good to be true. Yeah, it's, uh, I think the, 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 we have the possibility of some interim uh, volatility. I, I think that the risk really would be a double dip recession, if you believe that. And uh, that's a diminishing probability in the surveys of economists, but there are some who still put a significant probability on that. If you expect that, then uh, you, uh, certainly the base case of a 3.6% uh, default rate forecast, which is consistent with what the market expectation is based on the proportion of issues that are trading at distress levels currently, which is a good indicator of the default rate going forward. Um, but if you, if you'd have to revise those expectations if you really do see the economy actually turning down in 2010. And what do you think? I mean, what are you telling clients right now in terms of what to expect, let's say, just for the first half of, of 2010? A lot of new issues, spreads having come down. Is there going to be a better opportunity to get into high yield, do you think? I, I think uh, that would be risky to count on that. Again, the uh, momentum has been such that there really hasn't been that pullback, uh, even though uh, people have been uh, looking for it. And I think most of the professionals have expected it, but they've been wrong. What about the notion that uh, people ought to be selling some of their high yield issues, take some of the capital gains and redeploy the assets? Uh, historically, I mean, has that been a wise move? Well, I think that may be a little bit early to be looking for that. The question is what you redeploy it into. Again, the short term uh, fixed income instruments are not at all attractive uh, based on the yields. So uh, you might be looking at equities, and there probably will be a time where some of that capital that's in high yield now will shift into equities uh, because a lot of those are investors who would be comfortable with the risk of equities but just don't see the upside near term. So as the earnings prospects improve for stocks, I would expect some capital to migrate in that direction. What about duration right now? I mean, when you're taking a look at people's portfolios or you're advising institutional clients, I mean, are you trying to keep the duration uh, pretty short or are you willing to go out a little bit further? No, I don't think that's too much of an issue. High yield uh, tends not to be too interest rate sensitive. In fact, I've been doing some work recently that's found that when interest rates rise by less than 100 basis points, if you're talking about the intermediate treasury rates, you actually wind up 
having the yields go down more often than they go up. Why is that? Uh, well, because when interest rates are going up, it's often because the economy is doing well. So the risk premium comes down to the point where you actually have an, an absolute decline in the yields. So it's kind of counterintuitive. But high yield, uh, that's really one of the attractions of it, that it's not closely linked to the uh, fixed income market as defined by treasuries or high-grade corporates. So it's more linked to what the actual companies are able to do. Yeah. And yet, uh, you might think that would cause them to be very closely tied to the stocks, but they don't perform that closely with the stocks either. They're really sort of in a category by their own, which is a great advantage in building a portfolio because you really get a diversification benefit regardless of whether the rest of your portfolio is in stocks or in bonds. Well, you've made that case uh, in the past, right? I mean, this yeah. whole idea that, you know, people were always looking at high yield as sort of a subsector of, mm -hmm. uh, of a fixed income or even mm -hmm. a kind of hybrid of equity. And you're saying, no, no, pay attention. Mm -hmm. It's a separate class all until it's Itself. Yeah, and last year was a great demonstration because you had over a 57% return on high-yield bonds in one of the, the worst uh, uh, years ever for Treasury bonds.